the question and answer time with Alea. We're just going to be addressing particular aspects of the work that we do using energetic protocols and also the state of the world. And I actually want to start with, uh, with a little conversation about what we are in and why we're in it. So Earth, 200 years ago, started experiencing industry and technology in a certain way that was perhaps out of balance. It wasn't perhaps, it was out of balance with the natural nature cycle. And so very kindly and graciously, Earth said, fine, I'll give you 200 years. And if you haven't figured out a way to be sustainable and thoughtful and balanced and co-creative and not cause harm, then the technology survives and continues. But if after 200 years, you haven't figured out how to be balanced with your technology, I'm going to bring in particular aspects that will bring balance back to the planet. So we've had a choice over the last 200 years to bring in balance with all of our actions, with our corporations, with our companies, with our food, with our soil, with our cars, our transportation. And so this whole process that we're going through with the virus and the economy is actually Earth bringing back balance and crumbling structures that are not sustainable. And so we really want to see this as a choice, an opportunity to choose differently. Are we going to choose the environment or are we going to choose our money, our economy? And on some level, if we don't have an environment, there's no way we can have an economy. And it's really interesting. I've been pondering this over the last week or so of looking at pe people's choices of sheltering in choosing health, whether it's from a place of fear or relief of like, oh, yay, I get to stay home and do self-care. That's been a lot of people's mode. And it's been incredibly restorative and rejuvena rejuvena rejuvenation, that word, rejuvenating for many. But it also can trigger a lot of aspects. And so when you think about this cycle that we are now experiencing, Think about it from the place of, I am choosing my inner environment. I am choosing the earth environment. I'm going to start making choices that are healthy and sustainable. And so every single moment in our life, we have a choice. What do I want to eat? What do I want to say? When do I want to go to bed? Do I really want to watch TV? Or do I want to watch, um, read a book or meditate? So every single choice moves us on a particular path. And so the more gracious and gentle and easy this journey will be is by making really conscious choices. So I'm going to be bringing in energetic protocols in the tall cups tonight and also in the daily meditations over the next several weeks of how to make conscious choices. A lot of the times we don't even realize that we're making an unconscious choice that takes us in a direction that really doesn't support our greatest health, our happiness, financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically for ourselves and for the planet. So this is a major reboot of making conscious choices that are healthy and sustainable. So that's my little angle on choose the environment, Choose earth, choose sustainability in every moment as much as possible. There's another aspect that somebody wanted to have me talk about, and everything is super hot topics right now in terms of like major triggers, right? 5G technology, the vaccine, the virus, sheltering in, the economy, big, big buttons are getting pushed. And so I have a tremendous amount of compassion with all of these buttons, depending on somebody's situation, economically, physically, mentally, and emotionally. So I say this with a ton of compassion. And over the years, I've really looked at technology 4G, 5G, which is the fifth generation in terms of the cell phones. Um, and I believe that the body holds a, a vibration. And so when the body is holding a lower vibration, it is then negatively impacted by lower vibrational frequencies. So if my body is holding a really low vibration, I'm going to 
be negatively impacted by things in the environment that have a really low vibration like fear or pesticides. And I'm not saying that I intentionally go out and drink pesticide laden beverages or foods, but looking at it from the place of our physical body is a nature spirit and we are a soul riding in it. And our body is from earth and of earth. And there's this whole concept of the body holding a higher and higher vibration so that eventually in the body's completely self-actualized state, it can materialize and dematerialize at will because it has absolute control of every single cell. Now, I haven't gotten that to that point yet in myself, but every single day I do protocols of body, bring all of your control back to your own divine line that runs in your spine, control every cell in yourself. And then me as the soul rider, I am modeling to my body how to hold all of my control in my own divine line, really controlling what I can, as opposed to placing the control externally. Because the more the body places its control externally, the less control it has of itself. So backing up, if we want our body to hold a really high vibration so that it is not negatively impacted by lower vibrational frequencies, that means we need to help and encourage as like a conscious steward, our body holding higher and higher vibrations. And in the tall cups and the daily cups in my practice and my book, I talk a lot about really focusing on high vibrational qualities, compassion, kindness, joy, strength, empowerment, peace, balance, calm, amplifying those qualities in your divine line, in the body Davis divine line. Because the more that you as a soul are holding strong, coherent vibrations in your divine line and your body is holding strong, coherent vibrations in its divine line, the higher a vibration it literally holds and the body will then literally change its chemistry for a more evolved state and won't have the reaction to something in the outer world that might negatively impact another. And we've seen this a lot. You know, you might be out a, at a party and you don't get the virus, but everybody else, else at the party gets sick, or you don't get the stomach flu, or you don't get the food poisoning, but everybody else got the food poisoning. And so there are moments when your body is holding a really high vibration and doesn't get negatively impacted. So that is a journey that you could actually start doing uh, every single day of working with your body. You might bring in a daily meditation specifically for helping your body hold a higher vibration while being really grounded. Because the other thing with spiritual work is we focus on the upper chakras a lot. More, 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 more from above, bringing it in, bringing it in, and then that creates this top heavy experience. And so the more spiritual we get, actually, that can sometimes negatively impact our ability to manifest. And so when you're bringing in these high vibrational frequencies from above, you also want to be expanding your magnetics, expanding your roots, expanding the base chakra, expanding the second chakra and the third chakra. So the more you are balanced, bringing in these high vibrational frequencies, the stronger your energy fields and the less you are impacted in a negative way by foods that maybe are not super clean, by a technology that is negatively impacted, can, can potentially negatively impact. And I actually noticed that because in 2001, I had an enlightenment experience. And for about two to three years, I had this very negative attitude towards technology. I didn't want to touch a computer. If a cell phone came around me, I immediately got a headache. I went into this judgment and this constriction. And then after about two to three years, I was sitting in meditation and my guide said, Leah, what would happen if you just looked at it as vibration? And just like fear, you don't want to be tapping into and connecting with fear all the time and running that program. What if you held a vibration in your, in your divine line and in the body that wasn't negatively impacted by the cell phone. And now I don't get a headache when I put a cell phone near my body. I do have lots of EMF protection on my cell phone and I never put the cell phone up to my head directly, but I don't get as negatively impacted as I used to. So I think we still need to use caution because it's essentially saying to your body, hey, body, you can hold a really high vibe and we're gonna use caution so you don't have to work as hard not being negatively impacted by 5G, 4G, computers, EMFs. I still recommend EMF protection 
and being outside as much as possible, spending time in nature. I try to spend at least three to four days outside, grounding, walking, gardening, being with the rocks, being with the mountains, being with the ocean, depending on where I am in the world. So that is one perspective about 5G from a positive perspective. And actually in tonight's Tall Cups, we're going to be diving deeper into this about how to hold a higher vibration and actually look at everything as good and an opportunity. And then we don't propagate that whole paradigm of good versus evil because that is happening a lot right now, which is the cycle that is ending. So we actually really want to let go of that's bad, that's good, that person should do or shouldn't do. Mm -mm. When we want to shift a paradigm, we actually have to look at everything as an opportunity for growth, have compassion, and recognize that everybody is at a different point in their evolution. You are at a very different point in your evolution than perhaps the rest of humanity or the majority of humanity. And so how can you hold that high vibration or that different perspective from a place that's really humble and recognizing everybody needs to use their own mechanisms for their own growth and evolution? And there may be some souls that still use fear as a mechanism to grow, awaken, and evolve. And now you get to make the choice of what is the mechanism you want to use to grow, awaken, and evolve. So again, taking 20 steps back, what's really happening on the planet right now? All of the inner work that has been happening over the decades with many, many light workers, many people who are very conscious of, oh, we are having a spiritual experience. We are being in the hue. We are in the expression of sound, human. That, all of that inner work that thousands, millions of souls have been doing for hundreds, thousands of years is now actually starting to reveal itself in the physical dimension. So it's like the proof is in the pudding. And so our intolerance for intolerance is rising. Things that are not sustainable are crumbling. Things that are light and connected, empowering, healthy and balanced, they make it. They thrive in this new energy. And if you want to kind of think of the earth as this conscious planet, and there are energetic grids that encircle the planet, and all of the old energetic grids that did help a certain level of consciousness for a period of time, those old grids that were necessary because they actually grounded the planet in low vibrational frequencies, but low vibrational frequencies can be incredibly grounding. So we've had thousands of years of this energetic grid grounding, 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 grounding. And now what is happening at an energetic level is there is a grid that actually got created and laid down in the Atlantean and Lemurian times. And that grid is now coming into being. So since that Atlantean and Lemurian time, um, the human race, civilization, other beings and other dimensions have been laying down this very grounded vibration because you can't activate a really high vibrational crystalline grid unless the planet's super grounded with the magnetics. And so thinking about all of the the evil, the dark, the light versus dark, um, anytime somebody was out of alignment with their power, Think about it from a positive perspective where we were actually creating these huge magnetics, these huge roots that can now sustain and hold the activation of this high crystalline grid that is coming online. So it's an incredibly exciting time, especially if you look at what is coming into being as opposed to the old grid systems that are dissolving, releasing and we are now left with this beautiful rooted structure that can then support a much higher consciousness. I will dive deeper into that. Maybe in this talk up, the next talk up, I'll kind of keep watching the energy of when we really need to speak to that more. Um, those were just some of the pieces. There was a question about ADHD and getting into your line. So if you have ADD, ADHD, even dyslexia, um, you are dimensionally gifted. You are holding your awareness in multiple dimensions. And so the trick is 
holding your awareness in your divine line using your inhale, and then inviting some energetic aspect of you, not your mind, to reference the dimension where you can most easily connect in with your divine line. And so anytime I'm doing these energetic protocols, it is never with the mind. And so sometimes if we have ADD and ADHD, we think that we have to have our mind focused in order to do this work, and that's not the case. So when you use your higher self, your body to this higher self to pull your energy and awareness into your divine line, your mind actually kind of goes offline a bit because all of the energy diverts into your energetic fields to do the work. It's almost like you move into a place of stillness, neutrality, you drift off, and that is you energetically bringing your energy and awareness into your divine line more and more and more. A really good daily basic practice is using the inhale to pull yourself into an inner river of light that flows up and down the front of your spine to use your exhale to ground and anchor into that place, recognizing your soul riding in the body. The more you hold your energy and awareness in your divine line, the more you connect in with your essence, the more connected you feel, the more supported you feel, the more safe you feel. And then you are modeling that to your body and your body starts connecting in with supportive qualities that flow in its divine line that runs through the spine. So practice letting go of the mind, and really inviting your higher self to do the work of bringing your awareness into your divine line. Um, now I'm just going to kind of pause and take a look at there are um, questions. Somebody just asked the question of what do I use for EMF protection? And I have uh, like an EMF case that goes on over my phone like that. I also... Um, at the end of my day, I turn my phone onto airplane mode or I just shut it off. I turn all of my computers off at the end of the day. Ideally, I turn my router off if I can remember so that um, there's no Wi-Fi going through the house when I'm sleeping, but our bedroom is far enough away that we actually don't. I've checked the EMF. They, can, they actually have these little EMF gauges. Let me grab mine. And Can walk around your house and check your EMF exposure and I buy it from less EMF I don't have an affiliate with them <laughs> just sharing good information uh, less EMF and I'll put that in a link with the tall cups um, so they've got lots of cool products silk there's silk that you can buy from them and they're really affordable and they have some really great products for different things for your computers for your phones i actually put a cover because we have a smart meter and i put a cover over the smart meter and then i checked it with the emf thing and it was like totally just completely neutralized it was not not freaking out the meter um okay more questions we have just a few minutes left i hope that i've spoken to a few aspects that you all might have wanted me to. Oh, headaches. We are going to talk about headaches, but I will just tune in and look at that in just a moment. And Lolly, I'll bring in some protocols for the physical health balance, balancing the microbes, which helps with the COVID. And I actually think... <clears throat> I'm 99.9% .9 sure that I had COVID um, in January. It was the worst flu I've ever had in my entire life. My husband, who is a wee bit older than I, he actually was down for seven weeks. I was down for three weeks, but really, really badly for six days. And it was that dry cough, the fever, the aches, couldn't sleep. Um, it was a really bad flu. And so when I kind of tune into... Well, if that was COVID, which I really think it was, I keep asking my body, Deva, she's like, mm-hmm, we've had it. On some level, that's great because I can tell you it's a really bad flu. So you want to be strong and you want to be healthy. Um, and I actually found um, quinine and zinc. Zinc was the thing that touched it the most, but in the combination of quinine. So getting quinine and zinc if you don't feel like you've had it yet. Um, vitamin C, we did a ton of vitamin C, we did a ton of garlic, and I basically laid in bed for six days and did absolutely nothing. And I didn't even watch like movies, like no EMFs, nothing. 
six days in bed, flat on my back, rest, 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 rest. So if people have compromised immune systems, then you want to be even more careful because it is a pretty intense bug. Well, it's not really a bug, virus. Um, and why did it, why, are, why is this happening? And when I tune into like, okay, what was that virus really about? It felt like this really, and it was really interesting because I got it January 1st, the very beginning of the year. And I kept asking like, what's this about? And I just kept hearing reset in stillness, reset in connection, reset into that which truly sustains and supports you. So we're all getting forced now to stay home and reset ourselves in a way that is incredibly sustainable. And that can be challenging because there's the fear that comes up and the economic fear that comes up. And so we have to work really hard and use all of the tools that you've been cultivating for years to reset. And it's interesting, on Wednesday, we're going into a new moon. So tomorrow is the last day of the lunar cycle, which is always a great time to clean out, release, declutter. And then the beginning of the new moon usually doesn't have a lot of energy. The first two to three days, it's almost like this inhale. And we haven't really begun to feel the new plume of it. And so the first three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, is going to be a deep, deep in, almost like going into the darkness to find the light, to find what does sustain you. And so really cranking up the focus to do that practice, even if it's just for five or 10 minutes in the morning. So I'm gonna be bringing in daily cups to support that process and tonight's tall cup, all about that. Um, ADHD is more body deva as opposed to Soul Rider, although the Soul Rider can impact it because if the Soul Rider is very awake in multiple dimensions, it can distract the Body Deva. So I um, I reframe Body Deva and Soul Rider. And I actually have ADD, AD, I have ADD <laughs> and I have dyslexia. And I have figured out ways to navigate. And one of the ways in which I navigate is I let my higher self, me Soul Rider, move super, 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 super fast in a higher dimension. So fast. And as I'm moving super fast up there, I get really calm down here. It's like soothing to move that fast. And then the body literally relaxes and is able to focus on things in the physical dimension. But if I try to move as quickly in the physical dimension as I do in the higher realms, the ADD and the dyslexia just kicks in hardcore. So um, I really think of these things as multidimensional awareness, and it's just cultivating skill sets, tools, practices that help you navigate your conscious multidimensional reality with grace and ease. And the other thing that has just been invaluable to me is I feel into the energy that's coming onto the planet every minute that I need to kind of figure out, okay, what do I do now? I'm like, what's the energy coming onto the planet? Because the energy coming onto the planet, the energy coming um, up from the heart of Earth, that can pulse you into activities that are then sustained because the energy supports it. So if I have five tasks, I'll take a look at those five tasks and ask, does the energy today support any of these tasks? And if not, what does the energy of today support? So start getting pulsed by the energy that's coming onto the planet and from the planet. You'll be a thousand times more productive. And you can also go with the cycle of the sun and the moon, particularly the lunar cycle. So the first two weeks of the lunar cycle, you want to be building and creating. The last two weeks of the lunar cycle, you want to be cleaning out and decluttering and resting. So that's just kind of like a generic way of structuring your time. Okay. Headaches. Yes, let's just briefly look at headaches and then we'll sign off and prep for the tall cups that's going to be in 30 minutes. Okay, there's a couple aspects around the headaches. And the headaches can be caused because you are taking your energy and your awareness and putting it literally in other people's worlds, heads, trying to figure out what they're thinking, how they're doing. So bringing all of your awareness back to your own divine cosmic loop, being in your own head. 
also increasing the magnetics, the roots, also bringing all of your energy out of the future and back into this present moment. When I feel into the timing of, well, timing is different for everybody in the world, but I keep hearing like June, end of June, beginning of July. And it's interesting because we're going into that Mercury retrograde and it kind of feels like things have, have kind of tidied themselves up, calmed themselves down in that June beginning of Mercury retrograde. I could check the dates of that. Um, Mercury retrograde, June 19th. So it feels like before we go into Mercury retrograde, we'll be kind of, set, everything will be settling. Depending on where you live, um, numbers are going to be different. And so just a little tidbit of future, but headaches, bringing your energy and awareness out of the future, you can have your future self send information back to you in this present breath so that you're not taking your energy and going into the future. The other piece I said, the magnetics, the roots, the other piece is, yes, yeah, this is a big one. It's the creative energy. So we all have creative energy and there might be a part of you that is trying to figure out how to navigate in this time. So you're using your creative energy and you're holding your creative energy in your mental body, in your head. And you actually want to in, in, um, encourage your creative energy to be held in your energetic fields. So from my perspective, and everybody has different energetic anatomy, but when I feel into the energetic dynamic anatomy, we have our physical field, then we have our mental field, which is right on the perimeter of the physical field, then the third layer. So we've got physical field, mental field, third field, emotional field. And then we've got a fourth field, which is the energy field muscle. I call it your energetic muscle. And you actually want to hold your creative energy in your energy muscle. And then that takes it out of the mental body and then the head gets lighter. So when you need to figure something out, do it with your creative energy out in your energetic fields or at the level of your higher self, as opposed to trying to figure it out with your mind. Really tap into your higher self and the wisdom that you hold about how to navigate. And one last piece you are prepared for this time. You have been trained. You are a light worker. You can hold a strong, coherent field and positively, empathically impact hundreds of thousands of souls. You may be in a state of fear or confusion or disorientation that may be empathic mass consciousness. So over the next two to three weeks, I invite you, encourage you in dream time, to remember your wisdom. So every night when you go to sleep, just take a few deep breaths and ask that in dream time, you remember your wisdom, your power, your wisdom, your mastery. To embody your mastery more because it is a vibration. Your mastery is a vibration that flows in your divine mind. Same for your body and your team. And the more you're holding just the vibration of your mastery, you don't even have to mentally know what it is, the more supported, soothed you will feel. And then you will have the ability to magnetically draw in situations that are the reflection of that incredible support and mastery that flows within you. Breathing deep, staying in the present moment, holding compassion, holding discernment, staying out of the fear and the good versus bad, looking at, as, looking at this as an awakening and everybody gets to use their own mechanism for awakening. One of my favorite mechanisms for awakening is just looking at the beauty of nature. Every day you have the ability to look at the beauty of nature, even if it's a beautiful fabric. Nature created that. Find something beautiful with your body, with your environment, with your home, with the sky, with a plant, with a pet, a creature that you are a steward to. It is an honor to connect with you in this way. And I am in deep gratitude that you are holding your wisdom and your mastery in some dimension, which then begins to ripple and reflect that to you here and positively impact the whole.